What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking about fall crankbaits. Got some baits, some tips, some tricks to help you guys catch more fish with a crankbait this fall. Fall time. Fall time is officially crankbait time. You know, we talked about it in previous videos. We got colder nights, right? We talked about paying attention to those overnight lows. We talked about uh, paying attention to your, your water temps, how they're dropping. I know out here on Chick, been dropping like crazy. Uh, we got water fluctuating here. They started the, uh, the winter drawdown. Some lakes you'll have that, but more importantly, Pumpkin spice lattes. I've already seen a couple comments. You know, when I did this video last year, the seasonal video last year, I talked about if you go to your favorite coffee shop and you see pumpkin spice latte on the menu, you've probably missed that fall transition. Uh, I'm gonna add one to it. I was actually in a Home Depot the other day and I saw a bunch of Halloween uh, decorations. So. It's not, we're not even in October yet. We already got those decorations going out. So if you see pumpkin spice lattes and Halloween decorations, you should start thinking about that fall transition and more importantly, cranking. Cause as these uh, overnight lows drop, as the water temps drop, those fish feel more comfortable. They're on the move. They are looking for those, those bait balls. They're looking for the shad, the herring, the gizzard shad, the AOIs, the silver sides, whatever type of shad or bait fish you have in your fishery, they are looking for them and they're gonna kill them. They're gonna eat them. So a crankbait is my favorite subsurface way to catch them during this time period. So we're gonna cover some of my favorite baits, maybe go a little in depth with some crankbaits, some different depths. Then we'll talk about some tips, uh, some hooks, upgrades, that sort of stuff. And then we'll talk about gear real, real shortly, but I'll link everything down below uh, that I cover today in the video description so you guys don't have to take deep drawn out notes. So fall time, like I said, these fish are getting active. They are hungry, they're on the move, they're feeling more comfortable with that water temp, you know, dropping, right? More oxygen in the water. You got uh, less areas to cover. As that water temp drops, your grass starts dying away or at least shriveling up and condensing. So that really, really condenses those fish into certain areas uh, and it makes it a lot easier to target. So. This is my favorite time to throw a crankbait. You know, of course, summertime when they're out on the ledges, they're out on those deep rock piles, you're sitting there grinding away with maybe a, a 10XD, or maybe you have gizzard shad in your, in your body of water, so you're throwing the Mega Bass, the Big M, a real big profile crankbait, uh, the Azuma. Those are probably my three favorite, but you've been grinding, right? You've been fishing those deep ledges, those deep rock piles. That's still gonna matter but they're also going to be moving a lot. So my emphasis this time of the year is going to be on those mid depth crankbaits, maybe that 10 to like 18 foot range. And then really your ultra shallow crankbaits, uh, you know, fish this time of the year, those shallow fish, man, they push those bait balls insanely shallow. You know, like I said, a couple videos, a couple weeks ago in a video talking about like killer whales chasing seals up on the shoreline. These fish will literally corral the shad in inches of water and you'll see their dorsal fins coming out as they're blowing up on them. So we'll, we'll, we'll walk you through how to really take advantage of those, those ultra shallow fish as well. So we talked about why, right? Bait fish. A crankbait is my favorite way to trigger bites, right? We've talked about it for years. We've preached on it. A bass is a killing machine. They are a predator, right? Well, the best way to tap into their predatory instinct is to 
bring something really quick by them and deflect or pause or get a directional change and they just have to react. So some days they'll be choking that swim, day, swim bait, they might be choking that worm, whatever it may be, but if you find yourself needing to cover water and needing to trigger a bite when a fish doesn't necessarily want to eat or it might not be prime conditions, having that crankbait grinding by them, deflecting off a rock or a dock piling or a piece of wood, you know, burn, 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 pause, get real aggressive with it, back it up, let it high float backwards in their face, it triggers that predatory instinct and that is why the crankbait is my number one go-to. So enough talking about that, let's talk about bait. So a couple videos ago, I did kind of like a early fall transition video talking about thinking about those pumpkin spice lattes, thinking about putting on a hoodie. Uh, and in that video, I kind of mentioned that I start backing away from my Magnum Deep cranks and that is still true uh, you know every fishery is different you might be on a fishery where those fish are in that 20 to 24 foot range where you're going to have to stick with the 10xd or the azuma or this guy right here but a lot of times that those fish are in that key zone like 15 18 ish and that's where i really key in with those baits right there we're going to cover those that's the largest category i believe uh in today's video but if you're on a fishery where those fish are still out deep, they're still out there on that first break off that main lake point or on a rock pile that's down in that 20, 22 foot range, these guys right here. Strike King 10XD, Mega Bass, that's the big M 7.5, that thing gets down there deep. And then the Azuma Z Boss 22 and 24. Again, that's the depths, but those are my three go-tos. But these guys will, they will burn up your shoulder, right? You're throwing them on a big, heavy cranking stick. You're getting a long cast out there. It's all about dive angle and you're just grinding bottom. You hit something, you deflect, you pause, let that thing back up or get a directional change. A lot of times you'll see Matt and I fishing them. We'll make a bomber cast. We'll get that reel engaged and then we're just kind of ripping and getting that thing down quick so we can really dredge those deep uh, those deep areas where those fish are for the longest period of time. But again, that big bill on there, you're gonna need some special gear. I'll link that down below in the video description. But some of your fisheries, you're gonna need those deeper diving cranks to get down to where the fish are, where the bait are. You know, sometimes this time of the year, as we get cooler, those bait balls will go a little bit deeper. I'm not talking about the, the super the super shallow fish. I'm talking about the offshore bait balls. You know, the ones that you might be fishing over 40 feet of water. You know, they're gonna come up to the surface, fish are gonna be blowing up on them. You can probably take advantage of them with a, a top water if you get the chance. And then they're gonna go back down, those bait balls are gonna go back down into those deeper depths. So that's where you're gonna really need those bigger cranks. But for the most part, this is the bread and butter depth like that. Like I said, like that 15, 18, that, that 12 to 19, 20-ish foot depth range, that is where the magic happens this time of the year for me. So I do kind of limit the amount of deep crank, deep magnum cranks I have on this time of the year. Normally I'll have one, two, or three on depending on a water clarity, depending on the depth of the fish. But these guys right here, this is my bread and butter. Um, two of my favorites, so as we come off summer, a bait that I've been throwing all summer long, two baits I've been throwing all summer long, are gonna be the Strike King, the 6XD. I just showed you the 10XD. There's the 6XD for size comparison, right? And then the Rapala DT20, okay? Real aggressive, wide wobbling, uh, warm water cranks. Now, the reason I say warm water, just like I don't know, I say just like, I can't really think of what I'm trying to say, but in cooler water, you want a really tight wobbled action bait, okay? Warmer water, you want a real wide aggressive bait. The water's warmer, things are moving around, it's just a more aggressive kicking, thumping crank. These work really great into that fall, you know, during that fall transition and into that little bit colder weather colder water temps but as we get through September into October and you start really getting those cold nights 
that is where we really emphasize the speed cranking. Now, this is something we've talked about for years. Uh, we've designed products to excel in this specific cate category exactly. This is exactly this time of the year all the way through spring. So fall, that early fall transition, fall, that winter, winter transition into spring. This guy right here is our bread and butter. That is, this is the tactical DD crank, okay? Really, really tight wobble. This thing is what we designed for speed crank. And we're throwing, we're throwing all these cranks this time of the year on a seven to one gear ratio or an eight to one gear ratio reel. We are burning these baits. And the reason being, talked about it just a few minutes ago, you can get really aggressive and get these baits to deflect. You can get those directional changes. You can burn, 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 pause, let that bait float up, burn, 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 pause, get that thing a directional change, pop the, the rod tip, but you can trigger the fish. Even into winter, the coldest, we'll, we'll talk about this in, a, in a, a month or two when we're talking about the winter transition, uh, but even in the coldest of water temps, you can really dive in and key into that predatory instinct with these bass, even in cold water. But this guy right now, got a few different colors, DD minnow, mirrored minnow, glass minnow, all sorts of minnow colors. That's really, we spent a lot of time uh, really keying in designing these color patterns, these colorways. We got chrome cheeks, ghost minnow bodies, because we designed it for right now. Those shad eaters, those alewife eaters, those herring eaters, uh, silver sides, those fish are active. So you get that bait down there, you're burning, burn, 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 pause, rip, rip, burn, 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 pause, let that thing stop. And those fish just come unglued over those minnow mimicking crankbaits. That Tackle DD crank uh, is an awesome, awesome crankbait all the way through until spring. One other one that I really want to, uh, to highlight is gonna be this guy right here. This is an awesome crankbait. It's another really good uh, finesse crankbait, uh, that cold water crankbait. That is the Mega Bass Deep X 300. Right here, I have the Deep Six. Another great finesse uh, crankbait that's a little bit deeper, but that Deep X 300 plays right around in that same 12 to 18, 19 foot range. And that is an awesome, awesome uh, deep, deeper, or I say deep crankbait, not, not ultra or magnum deep like the 10 XD. So a deep crankbait, uh, that thing de deflects really well, has a real thin lip real tight wad, wobble and you get your great mega bass colors but those guys right there are awesome awesome cranks as well the deep six just goes a little bit deeper you know that 18 19 20 foot range here it is compared to the the uh got a blade bait in the calf don't need to do another how to remove a hook video look at these look at these bills look at the difference in these bill shapes and again it ha has to do with action, deflecting, and depth. You see that? Both great crankbaits. But if I was gonna have one, it'd be the one that Matt and I designed. I mean, we spent years uh, developing the, the action, the sound, being able to, to burn that crankbait without having it blow out. Um, first tip, I'm gonna give you some tips at the end. First tip, while I'm thinking about it, how many of you guys uh, have ever tuned a crankbait? I'd say that probably at least half of crankbaits that I pull out of package, you know, the first thing I do, I open the package, tie it on, and run it near the boat, and I check if that bait is running true, if it's running straight. You know, if you have a crankbait that tends to go off to the left or off to the right, you're not maximizing your dive angle. The key with these crankbaits is getting them deep, getting them to deflect off the bottom. But if you're throwing a crankbait that gets down 12 to 15 feet and you're in 14 feet, but you have a crankbait that's running off to the left or the right, you're not getting down there in that strike zone long enough. You might get there a little bit, but again, you're just having a bait that's running, running funky. So first tip, check the way your crankbaits are running. I don't care if they're square bills or 
uh, deep 10 XDs, guys, make sure they are running correctly. Make sure they're running correctly at speed. A lot of these, a lot of crankbaits on the market, if you start really getting fast uh, with that eight to one gear ratio reel, they are going to blow out or not swim or dive correctly. So pay attention to that. But uh, if you need to tune a crankbait and say that your bait is going to the left, all you do is take a, a needle nose uh, pair of pliers and you take that line tie right there, not the split ring, but the line tie, and you bend it just a little bit the opposite direction. It's really, really easy to go overboard and you can go from a bait that's going left to a bait that's running extremely right uh, with just a little, little adjustment. So be very, very minute on your adjustments, but always pay attention to uh, the, the angle and making sure that that bait is running straight. So that applies to all these crankbaits, uh, minus the blade baits and the lipless that we're gonna hear, we're gonna talk about here in just a second. But, so that's that first tip. Make sure that your baits are running correctly. Second tip, kill them with speed. All of these, even the 10XDs, I'm throwing on a seven to one gear ratio reel. Again, shoulders gonna be burning, your arm's gonna be pumped, you're, you're probably gonna have a, an arm that you know, look like Popeye on one side with an arm way bigger than the other, but uh, speed kills, especially this time of the year when they are schooling up on the, those bait balls and they're chasing those bait balls around. So two baits in the next category, it's kind of like your mid-depth mid crankbait, uh, running crankbait. It's gonna be the Spro Rock Crawler. You guys know that we love this bait. This is an awesome, if you're on a fishery like Dale Hollow or you know, a fishery that has a ton of rock. Uh, this crankbait really, really excels. And it excels into the wintertime too. It's a great cold water, cold water crankbait as well. Comes in a ton of craw patterns. Most of these colors that I'm gonna link or recommend or show you today are going to be more of your bait fish colors. But understand that crawdads are a, are a main, uh, food source as well so if you're not catching them on the craws or on the shad colors go with your your craw pattern so this this guy right here has a ton I, i'm probably 12 15 ish different versions of a crawdad so that guy right there real wide bill so it deflects extremely well off of it's almost like a deep diving square bill really and then the, this little guy right here this is the mega bass z Two. gets down about eight, nine, ten-ish feet. But where these crankbaits really excel are on those secondary points. So maybe you're, maybe you were catching fish all the way in the in the back that had some shad pinned up, and then you're also catching fish all the way off that main lake point on rock piles, uh, long tapering points, that sort of stuff. But maybe you need a crankbait to check that secondary point uh, or those secondary points in between the two extremes. That's where your crankbaits that run 8, 10, 12 feet really, really excel. You can go with these two guys. They get up, you can get them in uh, good uh, bait fish colorways, patterns, or good crawfish colorways or patterns. Okay? All right. Now let's talk about those shallow fish. Now this time of the year, those shallow fish get extremely shallow. Okay, so you can take your favorite square bill, right? You guys know that we've we've raved about the the River Sea Biggie for a decade. This is our favorite average depth square bill. So that three, let's just say three to five or four to six, that average depth, diving depth square bill, that thing is money. Has a great knocker system in it, deflects extremely well. You can burn this thing without blowing uh, it blowing out. The abalone shad is a must colorway to have, color uh, to have in that, that bait. Again, go with your shads, go with your craws. Um, two other ones real quick that we love. The, uh, the Bill Lewis ATV very very weedless extremely weedless square bill and then the uh spro little john fairly silent bait does have a weight transfer system in it 
uh, that has a little bit of a rattle to it, but all depends on the day, depends on the fish, uh, if you need to go with a rattle or not. But those are my favorite square bills this time of the year. The, the 13 fishing, the jabber jaws, another great one. But this time of the year, I find myself having to go shallower. Now let me back up a little bit. So if you're on a, a grass flat or you're on a big flat and you see there's grass right here, there's a good grass line here in that four to six foot range, you're gonna mess them up with this guy right here. The ATV, that, uh, that biggie that I talked about, those baits I talked about. What I run into this time of the year, two different scenarios. One, the very back side of that flat, those fish have those th that bait ball corralled in the very back. So I have to go ultra shallow or the grass is not on the surface. It's just a foot down, 18 inches down, tw you know, 12, 14, 18 inches down below the surface. Those fish are in there in that grass waiting for those shad, those bait fish to swim over the top. So those two different scenarios, that's when I go with the ultra shallow cranks. The Lucky Craft, the BDS-1, or the, uh, this is the Spro, this is the Fat John 50. It's an awesome color, kind of like that matte shad color. I've found that the fish hold these bait fish extremely shallow and if I can get a, of course, I can throw this ATV or a biggie up. I can fish a normal diving depth square bill in 10 inches of water. It's just not gonna really swim or deflect the way that it's meant to be. You know that every time blow ups. One, two, um, they're always, always tempting me. Just like you can throw a, a 10XD in five feet of water, right? You might get a one or two handle turns and you're going to hit and you're just going to grind. It's going to look uh, not, that bait's not going to swim to its potential in those depths. Same thing with the square bell. You don't need a square bell that runs four to six and you're throwing it in 10 to 14 inches of water. So that might make sense. So if you can, or if you find yourself in that situation, that's where you need to go with those ultra shallow square bills. Like I said, that BDS one, this one was a hard one to talk about last year. I gave you guys this one last year, uh, only because Tackle Warehouse got them back. They were discontinued for years. I used to buy them at top, top dollar on eBay because they were so effective in that ultra shallow water. And then with that lack of uh, bait in that kind of depth category, there's been some other ones that have really come out to shine. The Demiki, the, uh, it's the 50 size. The BTC 60 I or 50, that is an awesome, awesome bait. And then like I said, that, that Spro as well. Those ultra shallow square bills can really, really take advantage of those fish that are feeding on those those shad and those bait fish that are up in inches of water. The other thing, when you're fishing over the tops of the grass, like I said, if there's grass that's down 18 inches, a foot of water, these little guys will run that shallow. So they're gonna, they're gonna be swimming down, right? They're swimming down. You might, you might tick the tops of the grass. And when you do, you can rip that thing pop it loose, pause it, let it float up. Again, just like you would with these other square, uh, these other crankbaits, you get really aggressive with uh, your, your reel cadence and your rod twitches, okay? Now let's change gears and talk about lipless and blade baits, okay? These are coming back, right? The, these are our these are our baits that we throw pre-spawn. We don't really throw them a lot during or, or, or post-spawn into the summer. But from now, just like that tactical, the DD crank from now all the way to pre-spawn, 
the lipless cranks and the blade baits are lights out. Okay, so let's talk lipless real quick. We'll talk blades, then we'll cover some hooks and gear and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so if you're fishing in this depth range, right? 12 to let's say 18, 19. Or if you're fishing in this depth range, 12 to 18 inches, a lipless crankbait can be some of the most uh, producing baits you can possibly throw this time of the year, like I said, all the way through until early spring. You know, when those, as long as there's not a ton of grass, if there's sparse grass or you're fishing a grass line or you're fishing that secondary point where those fish are moving out of the back, they're getting ready to go out to their, where they're gonna winter, out to that deeper water, a lipless crankbait is tied on 100% of the time for me uh, all the way for these next few months, okay? As we get colder, that's when I'll rotate to the blade bait, uh, a little bit slower, uh, obviously a lot less aggressive sound, but those fish are sitting there, shallow, deep, everywhere in between. Fire that lipless out. A lot of guys, especially out here in the Southeast, you know, on your tenant, your TVA system, a lot of guys are just gonna be burning this. They're, they're gonna be throwing, you know, some kind of red lipless crank and they're gonna be just burning this thing on these big flats. A lot of guys will do it pre-spawn, burning it, you hit grass, you rip it, you burn it, almost like you're fishing a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. For me, I get a lot more bites and a lot bigger bites fishing it like a jig. Fire that thing out there, doesn't matter if you're fishing that secondary point, you're fishing that main lake point uh, near rock, or you're fishing 18 inches of water in or around grass. Fire that thing out there and it's just... Can you guys see that? I don't even know if you guys can see that. It's the third time, right? Let it fall. A lot like you're stroking a jig. Just enough to feel that lipless crank vibrate three, four, five times, let it fall. And those fish knock slack in your line. I have, I'm not even exaggerating. I've been fishing a lipless crank. You know, you feel that vibration, right? And you literally hear the fish hit the bait. You hear the rattles in the water when that fish hits so hard. That's how hard they hit it sometimes. Again, these fish are aggressive and they are killing machines. So they're trying to kill that bait. So out West, the LV 500 was hands down our go-to lipless crank. Uh, Matt and I caught a lot of double digits on the LV 500. Out here, the go-to bait seems to be that Jackal TN70. The TN70, the 50, or the 60, even the 50, a little bit smaller sizes. These guys right here, again, I'll link the colors down below in the video description. Your shads, your baby bluegills, your crappies. This is the bait. There's that. And then here's the LV500. Okay. TN70, LV500. Different sounds, uh, different falls but you'll have to you'll have to pay attention you'll have to try them both on your fishery and see uh which one your fish like and matt and i we've been fishing together or i've been fishing solo with both baits tied on and it seems like one day they want one or one day they want the other or one day they want a ghost minnow color or an american shad color and then one day they want a baby bluegill color right it all depends but those are my two go-to's you know the striking the red eye shad your Bill Lewis, your Rattle Trap, they're a little bit lighter baits. Uh, for this size, having that three quarter ounce just has a, a better fall and I just get bigger bites throwing those too. And then on the flip side, same areas as we transition to the cooler water, that's when we get back into the blade baits. Again, you fish them the same way, fish them a little bit on light, a little bit smaller gear this one I have paired up with that VMC bladed 
uh, treble. That's a really cool hook. So not only do you get the, vi the, the vibration, again, these are silent baits, right? They're blade baits, but you get a little bit of flash and flash can go a long way this time of the year. So if I can't catch them on the lipless hopping, I will rotate to the silent blade bait and uh, I'll kind of that one, two, three punch. I'll be throwing that square bill, I'll be throwing that lipless, and then the blade bait and just rotate through those baits and figure out what they want that day. But crankbaits, shallow, mid, and deep, this time of the year, you guys need to be throwing them. Now, real quickly, let's talk hooks. Uh, keep it really, really simple. Uh, I'm gonna, this is totally up to you guys. If you're fishing, around big fish now in my mind a uh, big fish is you know four plus pounds right if i feel like i have a chance to catch an eight a nine or a ten i am changing out the hooks on my baits to an owner st 56 okay i'll link this stuff down below in the video description but it's a 3x hook you still don't, you don't need a heavy rod to, to bury these hooks. They're still sticky sharp, but a three X hook, I'm not going to bend them out on all of my crankbaits. I change out the terminal gear. I change out the split rings and I change out the hooks split rings. I go owner hyper wire, get yourself a good pair of, uh, so these are actually Texas tackle. These are my favorite split ring pliers. They come in different sizes, but get yourself a good pair of split ring pliers. Rapala makes a good one, a good set. There's a, there's a bunch of them on the market, but um, I change out all of my hardware. So my split rings and then my hooks. So if I'm fishing around big fish, I'm going with those owner ST56s. If I, I'm gonna make this a little bit more complicated. Hook angle, right? Round bin, EWG, round bin, EWG. If they are eating the bait, I go with the gammies, the EWGs. This is my lipless hooks. It's my square bill hooks. Uh, and if they don't say they're like slapping at it or, you know, they're just not really eating it. That's when I just change out my hooks to the owner. This is the ST36. So 36 is your 1X hook. 56 is your 3X hook. Keep it really, really simple. If you're a guy that wants a specific treble for your crankbait, uh, owner makes the ST35, okay? What makes this hook different than the 36 is it has basically 150 degree, you see that? It's flat right here. So this is up, right? That's the bottom of your crankbait just has a really wide angle on that third side of your hook. So it has a lot more points, two more points straight out, one up comes to grass really, really well. Um, with that said, make sure if you are running this style of hook or any treble hook for that matter, that you're running, that you're putting that hook on there so that the two points sit around the belly and you have one down. And then on the back you have one facing straight up. So as you're changing out your hooks, there is a right and a wrong way to put those treble hooks on. So pay attention like that. So like I said, pay attention with that. So like I said, on an EWG, you want that hook one point down, two around the belly. And then on the back, you want one hook up and two almost flat. Okay. Makes sense. Last but not least, rods obviously you're throwing these big bad boys you need a specific rod and reel this is the loomis 966 cranking rod paired with a tranks 200 uh with this is what did i put on? i just switched this out this is a 16 pound fluorocarbon anywhere from 12 to like 16 17, 18 pound fluorocarbon is what I use, depending on if I'm around a lot of cover, wood, that sort of stuff. But I want that, uh, that bait getting down. So the smaller line size, the deeper, the less water resistance that it has in the water, uh, the line, and you can get down deeper. But you're gonna need 
with all these cranks, all of your treble hook bait, you want a rod that has a really good parabolic bend. You want that thing bending halfway down the rod, down into the handle. You know, when those fish eat that crankbait and you bury those hooks, you want that rod to load. Uh, that way when they come up and jump, that rod's, it's not a real fast action. It's not gonna unload and load real quick. You want that thing, you know, real slow, real moderate action. That 966 is great. The, the St. Croix, the big cranker is another really good one. For your mid-size cranks, hands down my favorite is the 906, the Loomis 906. Pair those up with, uh, again, a seven or an eight to one gear ratio reel. This is actually an XG, that's an eight to one gear ratio reel. You can see right here, that straight fluorocarbon, that's just because of water clarity. Uh, my next tip, if you can get away with it, go braid. Braid to leader, braid to mono leader. Now the reason being, even with these, these moderate action rods and fluorocarbon, when I'm burning, 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 and I pause, that rod's slowly unloading, that line is kind of stretching, and then I start burning. So that crankbait, it's burning, 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 and then just slows down, and then burning, 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 and it just slows down. With the braid, there's no, no, no line stretch. So you get burning, 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 stop. Burn and burn and burn and stop. So you can get real aggressive and ha be real reactive with the crankbaits, okay? Same thing with your square bills. So when I tick something, when I tick a rock or whatever it may be, and I pause, that bait pauses. You know, that lo that that line isn't, isn't stretching and giving, so I just have a lot more control of when and how long that bait stops and then gets going again, okay? As far as square bills, Lipless cranks, uh, 845 CBR, that's 855, metanium, bantam. You know, if you're throwing medium sized cranks, that metanium, the bantam, that bantam is a phenomenal reel. It's a single uh, piece body. It's just really, there's a lot of torque on crankbaits, a lot of torque on your elbow, on your on your wrist, and on the reel. So having that, that, that solid framed reel uh, helps a lot, helps with chatterbaits as well. Um, and this guy right here, this is the Croy, this is the finesse glass cranker. Again, super parabolic. That thing loads all the way. I mean, it's, it's a great uh, little lipless rod, little square bill rod. And then on the blade baits, that's where I go with like the 610 medium, the X-Pride, something like that. Maybe a, maybe a, a Loomis 873 CBR, something like that. But I will link all those all those products down below in the video description. You guys can check those out. But guys, crankbaits, fall time, pumpkin spice lattes, hoodies, gotta be throwing that crankbait. Whether it's a deep crank, a lipless crank, a square bill, a mid crank, a blade bait, one of those is going to catch you a lot of fish this time of the year. Whew, we're pushing almost 40 minutes. I'm sorry, guys, there was a lot to cover there. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get those as soon as possible. Like I said, I covered a ton of stuff. I will uh, link all of our favorite baits by category, by depth, colors, um, hook upgrades, gear, We'll add some budget stuff in there because there's some there's some nice budget options for a guy getting into crank uh, throwing crank baits. But uh, guys, we appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you stuck around for the the almost 40 minutes. I know that's a long time to uh, to listen to this guy talk, but unfortunately, I got to go edit it and listen to myself talk for this long too. So I feel the pain. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. If you learned something from this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and we will see you guys on the next video.